Yo, what going on, YouTube? Okay, I don't talk like that, but I'd like to. Sign at a TV. Okay, some of you may not know what that is. Um, but this is the main point of my talk today. It's January 2014, January the 3rd or something like that. Okay, um, I, I've been watching quite a lot of... Well, about a year ago I started watching GMS Israelites. That's what I typed into YouTube. And there were these black guys on the streets of New York um, preaching the Bible. And um, what first what first grabbed me was that they were black people, and they weren't doing it in the usual sort of gospel hallelujah as we've seen before. So this was new. And I thought straight away, this makes this cool. And I don't care what anyone says, and it's not PC, but black people, <laughs> they are generally cool. And they make things cool. The way they talk, the way they walk. And you can't take that away from them. I'm obviously white, um, but I think I have some black blood in me. <laughs> Don't ask me why. My eyes, they may look blue, but they're not. They're actually brown. Or brownie green. Anyway, that's got nothing to do. But they were making this preaching cool. Um... I didn't agree with everything they said. These early ones were saying that <laughs> they were just going to grab women and take them. Now, so I don't want to focus on the things they said I didn't agree with because they said a lot of things that I did agree with. And they definitely seemed to be finding new interpretations, at least that I had heard at that time, that I've never heard in any church. And it would, it would be interesting. I mean, the videos are really quite low quality. They had buses going past. You actually had to struggle to listen, but I did. And they were coming out with a lot of good stuff. Now, what's happened recently is it started some sort of a trend. And you've got um, Islamists on the scene as well. And you've got these Egyptologists, and you've got these other sections, Moors maybe. And they're, you know, they're debating, and, it, and, and that's good. That is good. But my instincts tell me that some of the newer elements to this scene are what you'd expect when any organization a new organization starts to get a bit bigger and a bit more popular it's going to get infiltrated by the enemy because <clears throat> that's what they do so the question is who are the infiltration who are the enemy and that you know that is a good question and it's very difficult to say because, you know, they're all, they all seem to have some good argument. But that would be my warning there, that there is part of it is, is the enemy trying to infiltrate, trying to weaken the message. My own personal view on all of this I mean, I hope it isn't. I hope it isn't. I hope they're just debating and they're going to get some fundamental truths out. And uh, and basically they are. I don't know why I'm being so negative. Um, so I don't want to be negative. So I'd say, I mean, they, they are because they're going back right back into the earliest languages. I think Venetian, Aramaic, I think is one of the earliest. And they're understanding actually what, what's what. 
Now, I'd say my own personal opinion is that the ones who stick with the Bible, um, you see, the thing is, I've always thought that was impossible to stick with the whole Bible because the Bible contradicts itself, at least in the translation I've got. Um, but I'm convinced, and I've said before in my videos, that there's in the New Testament, there's bits taken out, there's bits added. As I've said before, stuff mentions Amen. Um, a lot of Jesus's so-called miracles, I think, are added. So I think they make the mistake of taking everything as God's word. I think they need to be a bit more uh, precise. Uh, right, sorry, I'll just say my negative one. I do think the one of the, the the newer groups, I think it's Israel United in Christ, I-U-I-C, and they're all wearing purple, they've got these lovely uniforms, a lot of them wear glasses, and they just seem to repeat, you know, very small parts of the Bible and repeat it over and over to me. And if anything, I would point a finger at them as the infiltration from the enemy. Anyway, so I think, you know, you, you, you can't take the whole Bible. I think you just got to take the, the wisdom from within it, you know, and if you can repeat that and remember some of it and tell it to somebody else, then that's some really good wisdom. And in the Old Testament, I mean, the God that is walking around is not the God that created the universe, surely. Because in the Old Testament, it's quite primitive. And it was probably an alien who said he was God and maybe had plenty of power, but I kind of believe was giving them the right teachings, giving them the right um, advice, but wasn't actually God but was saying perhaps as well as they knew whoever the creator of the universe it can't just be one thing the universe is here though <laughs> i know i'm rambling um so yeah in the old testament but there's wisdom there there's amazing wisdom and knowledge and you can probably work out a lot of things from it you can't, you know, take it word for word, but neither can you dismiss it completely, as some of the Egyptologists do. And the Egyptologists, you know, maybe they're thinking, oh, let's go back to the ways we were in Egypt. And they're all wearing these freaking <laughs> Arab hats. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, Egypt was condemned by God as Moses was led out, if that is true. But, you know, they weren't living right because they, they died out, right? That knowledge was lost. Condemned. They were condemned. As were the Israelites. And that's how you know the blacks are Israelites. Because really they are the, the only ones who have... When you read the end of the Old Testament and you see what God is going to do to them next, um, you know they're cursed... He's really lost every bit of patience with them and he's given them this punishment. And no one has been punished like the blacks have been punished. So there's a fact. So that's why I'll sit on that. Um, so, no, I commend what they're doing. I think it's very, very good and... Sanetta TV, keep on coming, uh, subscribe to the Black News 102, I think, and Real Atheist, it's very interesting stuff, and it's definitely given me a, a wider perspective, a better, a better view on things, because we don't have to really get sentimental to what God is called on I mean, if we think of God the creator of the universe you know he's not going to mind whether someone calls him Jesus or Christ or Muhammad or Allah or God or spiritual creator 
he's not going to mind that or she all they're going to mind is is that you know we believe in something uh, and so you have you know you have repercussions for what how you live your life afterwards because if you don't believe in anything then why shouldn't you just go around take 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 and being wicked um you know because there'll be no repercussions so i think that's what's important and you know what clothes you wear what hats you wear whether you grow your beard your hair i mean i see grow my beard and hair and i think that actually the reason i'm doing it not just to be different but because i actually think it's beneficial for my health um, you, when the sun shines on on all of this, it does actually absorb it. When the rain falls on this, it does actually absorb it. The moustache warms the air that I breathe through my nose. That's beneficial. The beard is nice to play with. <laughs> Some people think it's good for your eyesight. I don't know. Fennel seeds are good for your eyesight. Right, so that's that. Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving that sort of stuff. Right. The next subject of this discussion is the um, the false prophet to come, the false second coming, the trickery that I felt has been coming. We had the other day, um, again, the first I've heard of it, maybe it was around before, I'm sure it probably was, but some Israeli prophet died in 1996 or something. And he had made predictions that apparently had come true before. And before he died, he left a note to be opened one year after his death. And on the note, it said, um, I've spoken to the Messiah. His name is Jesus or Yahashua, whatever. And he will come soon after the death of Ariel Sharon and Ariel Sharon went into a coma in 1996 and now it's just coming out news that he's his major organs are failing he's probably got days to live so we await then this prophecy to come true from this Jewish rabbi and I just think this could be the precursor for the trickery to come. Because Jesus isn't going to come if Jesus is coming, or the God, or whatever, until after the tribulation, or during it, mid-during it, not before. So if we have a I mean, it would be funny when it would be really interesting if someone came on the TV and said, yeah, I'm Jesus. Yeah, I mean, that would be interesting to watch. So that was just a, a quick heads up on that, you know, that prophecy coming out of nowhere. Is this the build up to it? And we're seeing a, a few videos now of time travelers and stuff on, on YouTube, you know. It, is it? Is it all building up to something? Let's wait and see. Okay. Positive vibes.